to collaborative writing and the Ponyville Cider Fest sneak peek. Uh, yay! Woo! Woo! It's your friends here on a Sunday morning. It is phenomenal. We love, to, love, to, love, to, love, to, love to see you all out here. And let's all give a great hand to Vivid for doing such amazing work. Yay! Team effort. Team effort. And, and thank you for being awake this early. I know that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. <laughs> I just did improv, and I'm still not awake. Aww. <laughs> and I'm extremely sweaty. So, what are we going to talk about today? First, we're going to do some quick introductions. Uh, then we're going to talk about what is collaborative writing. The answer may shock you. Um, we'll talk about a few steps for a successful collaboration, uh, a few general tips. And then we're going to talk a little bit about Ponyville Slider Fest, talk about the story, and maybe do a little demonstration of kind of what you can uh, expect when you show up there. So, Woo! Woo! I'm excited. Okay. Woo! Great, let's get the show on the road. So, who are we? Quick introductions. Uh, my name is Vivid Syntax. I am a fan fiction writer. I've been writing fan fiction for over 20 years, and I'm the experienced director for Ponyville Slider Fest 2023, an interactive storytelling adventure. Uh, Steel, go ahead. Oh, hello, I forgot what I put up there. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tabletop gaming for this con, Ponyville Cider Fest, and a whole bunch of This isn't Cider Fest. <laughs> but it will be. It will be. It will be. For table for, for Witty City, Cider Fest, and a bunch of furry cons nobody cares about. <laughs> tomato! Tomato! Give my hand, guys! Woo! Uh, yeah, professional game master and uh, tabletop game designer for 20 years. I uh, published one game. Can I, uh, can I get a shout out from all my changeling lovers out there? Woo! <laughs> who forgot to fill out the section on the slide. Apparently! I'm a man of mystery. Who are you? I'm very collaborative. Change link! Put him in the budget! If you're the real Sonic Oh, man. I'll be scrying you tonight. I'm flashing back to that one panel in 2012. I improv the whole thing because I wasn't scheduled to do the panel at all. Which went great, actually. That's on YouTube. But no, Sonic Sons, I've uh, been in the fandom since like 2011 and um, got involved uh, doing voice acting and uh, writing for uh, radio plays, uh, Doctor Who's Adventures, if any of you remember that. Oh, no! Yeah, I don't know. I was, uh, I got to do a ridiculous franchise hand! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah? And on that note, Janice is not on the leadership team, but she's fantastic and she deserves to be on this panel because she's Woo! on the We'll talk about this more. You've already written 21 stories for our collaborative project, I think. Wow! Up to 23. <coughs> you finished two this weekend. Wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, big hand for Janice. She's yeah. amazing. Alright, she's up here, Justin. Tell us about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Judith Slight. I'm not really that important, but you know. <laughs> oh, <wrong. laughs> You're like the Hamilton of fanfic. Lies and slander. Um, I started this because I wanted to try to show myself that I'm a decent writer. So, you know, I'm gaining confidence, just like all of you should be, because I'm sure all of your writing is amazing, and you guys are amazing, so you are the real awesome MVPs. Give Yay. yourself a Yay. Yay. We love you so much. All right, so collaboration. What is collaborative writing? Uh, there's a, several different levels you can think about this. On the one, on the level one kind of thinking is you know writing stories uh, with more than one person. That's a really really basic definition. How many people here have ever done a collaborative project before of any kind? No. Excellent. So we all have a little. Wait, you a lot of us have a little bit of experience with this. So you know that you know it's some of it is just like maybe bantering things back and forth and uh, you know eventually kicking something out the door. That's level one. Level two is uh, thinking a little bit more deeply about it, creating a, a cohesive story despite differences in style, skill level, and creative opinions. Oh, I've read a lot of cold apps before that it's just like, you can very easily tell like, this chapter was written by this person, this chapter was written by this person, and that's fine, you know, it's uh, all well and good and can be a lot of fun, uh, but you can create something truly magical when you're able to synthesize everything into one really coherent story that uh, oh all blends God. together really well. Would you say it's kind of like round robin, only like good round robin? <laughs> 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 
Rounder Robin. Rounder Robin. Round Robin. Round Robin. Round Robin with editing. <laughs> Ooh. Call him Borb. Do you round the Robin up or down? I guess then it would be a round Batman. Ah. Oh, hey. 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 oh no, I've killed steel. <laughs> I've killed steel. I have collaborative writing. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, like an email. We can post it on like the Twitter or something. Yes. I am the right. <laughs> this is going to be one of those panels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting through our content. Sorry. Yeah. Just realize like he let me up here. Yeah. Yeah. Two <laughs> bad dad jokes for a half hour straight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, there is kind of one more way to think about collaborative writing, and it is an exercise in project management. Oh! <laughs> Yay! I, br I don't even wait. Now bye. 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 So what you're saying is that this panel could have been in now. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Uh, uh, when I say this, that it's about project management, I do a lot of project man management as part of my work, so that's going to inform kind of how I'm thinking about this at least. Uh, and it does, it can be a little bit of work, but it's also tons and tons of fun. Uh, when you think about it in terms of like a project with you know specific goals and ways to uh, fold up people, make sure other people are feeling included, it helps you, um, again using business terms, I'm really sorry, I'm probably business this day, uh, helps you really scale your efforts. For Ponyville Cider Fest, we have, uh, I think currently about 40 people that are helping in either an actor, or writer, uh, editor, or some other capacity. And 40 people is, like, a lot. That's almost the size of, the, I think, the entire staff for this convention. Yep. So we've got people uh, in... Oh, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm volunteer for Winnie City. Please. Yes. Please help us. Please help us. It's the last day! This is my very first time volunteering. It is really fun. Like seriously guys, it's not bad at all. They will let you go to your panels and stuff. You don't have to worry about missing things. They will work around you and they're fantastic. Enjoy it. But I'm more worried about being a drunken fool. I can't drink and work here. Have you seen a volunteer? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen their shoes? I say that with love. <laughs> also, quick shout out to all our volunteers in the audience. Yeah! Thank you. important thing to remember is that whenever you work yeah, with a lot of people, the more people you have, the more complications you can have. People are wonderful to work with, but everyone has their own needs, their own timetables, uh, lots of things to really keep track of. And so like, um, our leadership team, and me especially, have been doing a lot of boring work of like, hey, here's the spreadsheet of what everyone is working on. Here's the spreadsheet that has the timelines of everything. And when, you have the, when you're willing to kind of accept that this is going to be a little bit more mental work in that space, it helps you get organized and make sure that you're actually going to finish the project, which is, again, ultimately what we want to do. Um, the other thing that's similar to project management with a big collaboration like this is that ultimately somebody has to be the person responsible for it. In that case, me! If it all goes wrong, then Charlie will slay me! Oh. And that what scares me! Yes, he, will, he will shave my beard. The worst. He will shave his beard with his own beard. I don't even know how Wow! What does that mean? I don't know. Friction of beards. Fire! <laughs> Challenge is stuff. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what? We should just change all the Chuck Norris jokes to Charlie jokes. Oh! At least he makes Challenge accepted. Uh, yeah, when you, think, when you think about any of your projects, you really do yeah. need to have someone that is like the driving force behind it, or you know, some kind of driver. Because it's again, if you just want to have fun with your friends and maybe just you know finish a half completed story or whatever, like that's fine. That is totally valid. But if you really care about uh, getting something out the door, someone there's got to have to be someone who's going to step up and say, "Hey, folks, we have to actually do the writing part of it, not just not just the ideating." So it's always helpful to have someone designated there. So let's talk about a little bit more about project management and writing. Again, talk about timelines, talk about team schedules. And one of the big things that happens, especially with a giant project like this, is like, real life happens sometimes. <gasps> <gasps> yeah, who out there has a real life? Who has that? Wait, what's your life? Is this the real life? I have a is life. This this is real life. Yeah, we're in the Matrix. <laughs> the Matrix of Ponyville. Does VR chat count? <laughs> <laughs> it's real to you. 
I reject your reality and it's Substitute my own. Mode. <laughs> yes. I've tried to reject reality multiple times. It doesn't work out. Well. I know. They don't take the returns. I didn't reject reality, it rejected me. Well, we accept you. See, this whole bit is yeah, collaborative writing. Yeah. 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 Now we're writing jokes together. One of us. One of us. Reject humanity. Become monkey. No, become horse. Of course. Of course. Of course. Become an alligator. Exactly. Exactly. Look at look at us. Our our wings and horns. You're an alicorn. You're an alicorn. You get it. Everyone's an alicorn. Okay, M.A. Larson. Now we're going to talk about quality control. Eventually, someone has to be the wet blanket so that we can move on and make sure that the project actually gets finished. I know, right? Uh, but again, when you're, the biggest thing that we want to accomplish when we are building this convention is we want it to be a, uh, a celebration of writers all throughout the fandom, and we want it to be fun for the attendees. And that means we really want to do a good job of it, and so someone has to be the person that says, uh, we're going to come in and we're going to do the editing, and hey, you might need to change your story. There's some uncomfortable co uh, conversations you have to have through that, but it's a wonderful way to just honestly just grow as a person. And I found that when I'm collaborating with people, when you can start having that honest dialogue with them, it's, uh, it makes you much better friends, actually. Like, yeah. It helps strengthen your relationship. It's pretty special. When we get that flow when everyone's synergized together, it's amazing. Can somebody just change my stories for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll insert it's all the giant purple here by chance. <laughs> no, all right. Overlord's one is like helping us with all the editing I'll stuff. Is it like one big story or a bunch of little? Like I don't even understand what's going on. Yes. Step zero when you're collaborating is to know what you want. Um, this is a. One of the biggest things that I think we ran into as a leadership team is that, like, the first big discussion we had to have was, like, A, panic, and then B, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, what shape do you want the story to take? What do we want the overarching, uh, you know, what is going to be the conflict? What are, we, what are we really trying to do here? What do you even want this experience to be? And, I mean, this, this is back, like, six months ago or more at this point, but um, I remember those conversations. There were a lot of, like, We'll say very passionate conversations about <laughs> what we thought would be the most fun thing for attendees. And we all come from a diverse background of experiences with working on projects like this. So uh, I guess, what do y'all do? Y'all remember those conversations and what we were talking about? I remember. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, how much can I spoil? <laughs> Basically, there were several different ideas of the basic structure of the thing. And I was keen to make sure that it would work with a herding cats dynamic that's lots of different writers will have lots of different ideas and somehow all of that needs to be okay because um, yeah. otherwise we'll be coordinated to the end of time yep. i do have one question did you ever consider twilight's secret ship at times yes uh -huh, yes <laughs> it, was, it was on the table it was on the table there's a lot okay. of stuff on the table that, that makes me happy yeah, yeah that was it was really fun it was quite wild there were a lot of things being said thankfully i wasn't the one in charge of everything for a first <laughs> so it was so nice to be like hey some of that responsibility i don't have to worry about anymore yeah. i'll just leave that over there <laughs> oh so nice but yeah there was a lot there was a lot we had to contend with and it was quite fun uh, and I'm so excited to, to be working with these guys because it's great and uh, I think we're making something special for you guys. Yep. And to Sonic's point, there is a, um, that idea about herding cats, we just, we realize that like, we want to give everybody the things that are important to us. So again, think about what it is we want. We want the attendees to have a good time, we want the writers to have a good time, and we really want them to be able to express themselves. And so it led us to a format uh, where the writers are going to get to, uh, rather than us trying to make one singular story, we're making something that's a lot more open ended and gives the writers a chance to write about their favorite characters and write about the uh, stories they want to tell, and then give the attendees the option to pick and choose which part of the story they want to experience. Are you guys making like a mini book, like a choose your own adventure book? Okay. Or we're yeah. chasing our way towards it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You'll find I'm like that. sitting here struggling. Give me! The back of your con book, the last, the back yes. Yeah, yes. everybody look at the back everybody of your con book. Everybody has the con book. Please turn to the very that back book of your con book. That book was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud of it. Okay. Yeah. Look. <laughs> All right. Kind of step one, once you know what the heck you're uh, trying, to, uh, trying to work towards, is again, assigning roles. Um, leadership is really about showing up. And if you want a product to uh, to actually you know, come into fruition and to be a real thing, you have to eventually do it. And that's really, what, that's really what this collaborative writing process is about, is getting together people who are excited about this thing and uh, empowering them to do the thing that they really enjoy. You know, sometimes, sometimes people are going to take some extra poking. They may get really excited, but they are nervous about contributing. Sometimes people are Janice Delight and will write, again, 23 stories and two of them at a convention. <laughs> My goal is 100. Wow. Which is fantastic. Which is 
crazy. How? I absolutely bombed. All of the above. Yes. And so she's actually writing one under the table. <laughs> 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 and again, with be, uh, why do you give her the idea? <laughs> uh, when you're being part of a team, everyone is going to have different. Uh, everyone's going to have different strengths. Like, uh, like Steel, for example, has done a lot of work on the kind of game mechanic side, uh, and so we were able to, you know, bring a lot of your experience to figure out what, how this can actually work, and how are people going to interact with the app, with like the phone app that they're going to be using. Mm -hmm. That was another hint. There's a phone app that you're going to use. <laughs> has a lot of uh, uh, you have a lot of experience with like video and like said voiceover and presentation. How do we how do we make this look polished? How do we uh, show everybody like, the best the best version of the story as we can? And I'm also here. Except you're also yeah. a writer yourself, which means you can also And I'm also freaking out like Twilight, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. So the thing is uh, you want people you want to be able to match people's skill sets with what they uh, with what they need but you also need to be able to learn to ask for things. Because sometimes there's gonna be something that maybe no one is gonna be great at, but someone still has to do it. And so again, part of that uh, honest communication process is learning to ask for, hey, could y'all help me out with developing content for the slide show, for example, or how we're gonna do the, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and last thing is, yeah, learn to, learn to ask for things and learn to do them. There's a bunch of stuff that, you have to do, that you're gonna have to do if you want a project to succeed, and that means, like, if no one else can do it, you have to do it, or it's not gonna happen. All right, step two, do the thing! Yay! 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 Do right now. is teacher right. I'm so sorry, yeah. that is the truth. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard is the one that's underlined up here. A bad story is better than a good idea. You can talk about ideas forever. You can go round and round and round and round trying to make it perfect, but at the end of the day, all you have is a bunch of stuff in your head and no one else can enjoy it. It's much better to get something out there and work with your editors and say, hey, can you, uh, can we fix this and uh, make this a little bit better than it is to just try to make it perfect before anyone's written anything? Question. What if your idea is something like My Immortal? <laughs> uh, then you become infamous and internet famous I for decades. <laughs> <laughs> Half-Life, Full-Life Consequences? I mean, how many people have read that compared to your average pick? Yeah. One of the things that I've learned from the business world that is extremely helpful is, uh, like, you have to kind of kill your ego a little bit, but if you, uh, if you write something, it's really hard to get people to commit to an idea before it's on paper. So it's a lot easier to just write something and say, hey, how would you all fix this, instead of saying, what is it that you want me to do? Uh, I think I actually did that with the, that's actually how we started with the uh, main plot line that's, that's happening. Right, yeah. I, I, wrote, I wrote something, it was super melodramatic and like way overblown, and everybody, and everybody very kindly told me that, but it gave us a starting point to say, all right, this is clearly wrong, but we know kind of the direction we want to start going in. So don't be afraid to throw something out there. It's not gonna be perfect. It's much better as an iterative process. Step three, edit and unify. Uh, this is the step that we're on right now with the main plot of the, uh, of the story. Uh, we've written a lot, all the like, major components of it, and so we're at the stage of saying, all right, we have our pieces, we've all written different parts of this, let's regroup and think through what we have. There's a bunch of stuff that like, <clears throat> we all thought we were on the same page, but now that we have it on paper, it's, we're gonna have to fix some stuff because we were apparently not on the same page. That's a pun because the yeah, book thing. Yeah. <laughs> Puns are best. Yay, I'm, I'm a dad now, so I have to get good at those. Uh, and you have to have the honest conversation with yourselves, like, all right, what's working and what's not? How do we uh, how do we make this into one, again, unified story? So you determine which uh, major changes need to be made. And again, you kind of have to kill your ego in this scenario, because you're going to make something that you're probably really, really attached to. There's There are some details about the story that I thought, yes, this is going to be perfect, and like, all four of y'all on the team were like, no, we're not doing that. And I'm like, all right, we're not doing that. And honestly, I think the story's gonna be better for it because now that we've gone that direction, I see you guys were right. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Any other comments on editing? Uh, I mean, gallery? just like, yeah, I had a similar experience with um, uh, Floating in a Box, you know, so this character's adventures thing a while back where I'd written some uh, short and the guy in charge, Squeakin' On, um, was and trying to edit it, and I was resisting for a while because I didn't think any of his edits were necessary. And then I eventually realized, well, they're not necessary, but they are helpful. <laughs> like, I, I need to lower my bar for like what I'm willing to accept as a criticism because you're right, yes, that does make it better. Okay, kill your ego. Like you said. <laughs> All right. Um, quick note on staying friends. <laughs> 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 this is the this is the reality of it is that like sometimes often leader, um, 
you're gonna have to meet disagreements. There's gonna be times where there's going to be some friction because again, people are doing these things because they really, really, really care about this project and we talked about killing our ego and everything, but it's hard. We all care about the story and we want what is best for the story and um, in some capacity, we all think we know what is best for the story because that's, it's, it's our baby, it's our, it's our thing that we're creating. So you need to have someone in a position who's able to be the kind of neutral party and say like, look, Let's all take a breath here, let's figure out what's actually happening, and let's make sure that we're all staying friends so this whole thing doesn't fall apart. One of the biggest things there is to ask questions without judgment. Don't be, be like, oh, don't ask like, oh, like, like why, do, why did they take you off? You have to ask questions more like, you know, what's happening? What are you feeling right now? What do you, what do you think would happen in the ideal world? Do you think it's reason, uh, do you think this course of action is reasonable? And those sorts of questions. Um, and again, your friends, we're doing this all because we care about it. And that's, I think, the easiest thing to lose sight of in a collaborative project uh, is like, again, pe people, get, people get really, really intense in these things, which is great. We love that energy and that passion, but you know, sometimes you have to take, back and, uh, take a step back and say, this is a, this right. is a fun pony story. And I would say too, because we've harped on this kill your ego thing a couple of times, it doesn't mean <clears throat> you never speak up about your ideas. Right. You, you, you brave enough ego to be like, I have ideas. And, uh, and and see where it goes, and sometimes uh, the group just has a different vision or something, and that's fine. Um, also, sometimes you know you can get uh, criticism on a thing. Let's say if it's from one person, and you don't get what they're coming from at all, and you want to like come back immediately and argue back, and you might just step away for a week. And then the conversation is easier because it turns out they were really stressed out or something. Yep. And it was like a whole external thing that you didn't realize. So you gotta learn these skills as you go. And on the other side of things, there are people who, you know, don't necessarily have an ego but have a complete sense of anxiety. And you have to be very careful because if you say something just the wrong way, you might make them think, I should never do this again. Yeah. I have no idea what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, again, being sensitive and remembering we're all people here. Yeah. But horses. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Except for the changelings. Except for the changelings, yes. Uh, Except for iterating. I am fellow horse. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing nothing is ever going to be perfect. We all have a grand vision for this Ponyville Cider Fest project. We are never going to make the perfect experience, but we can get as close as possible. And the best way I found to do that is right. to iterate. You know, Never get, you don't want to get like so focused on one thing that we say we have to do it exactly this way. You try something, then you edit it, then you try again, and then you try again, and you try again, and try again until eventually you go, oh god, the con is in 24 hours. We have to find a lot of details. Been there. Been there. We're actually, I'm actually very excited. We're actually still like on schedule for yeah. all stuff, which makes me very happy. Started right before. You, you knock on wood right now. There you go. <laughs> this is why I've been working on this since September. <laughs> yeah. This is why I'm writing a ridiculous amount of stories. Yes. Yeah. I'm writing underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke, she actually is. <laughs> I assume the truth. Way to multitask. <laughs> Step five of this is that eventually, uh, like we just talked about, you eventually have to call it done. Again, <clears throat> consensus is really, really hard, but deadlines can actually be really helpful for this, and this is why we set up our timeline to say, like, look, again, never gonna be perfect, but at some point we have to say, here's a product that we can put into the app that we can start training our actors on, that we can start, uh, you know, uploading the secret code words onto the website. See, I'm throwing out more hints, it's great. So... <laughs> um, like, how do we get involved? <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. I'm and sorry. No, 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 we're excited that you're excited. <laughs> so as long as I can trip. Especially about like what the timelines are going to be ahead of time, so that you can have that definitive stopping point. Because otherwise, again, and it's it's totally valid if you want to just keep it a really casual thing. But if you don't have a stopping point or know when it's going to be done, your project will go on forever, and you'll then you'll get to those points. Then you'll be one of if you're publishing on fan fiction, you'll eventually see one of those Reddit blogs of like. Hey everybody, sorry, we haven't updated the story in a year, we're going on hiatus for a little bit, like, we've all been there. Alright, and what part of that happens there is the, the snowball effect where because it's been a long delay, you feel like it needs to be that much better to like make up for yes. the delay, which leads to more delay. Um, and then you just like never put anything out. When we started at the, well, um, putting the box, it was like, look, let's make a thing with one character and it's one minute long and throw in some background music and just like put it out there and you know. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about, bleh, a little bit about general tips. Um, Steel, I think you put this all together. Walk us through it. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> all right, yeah, I do, I do recognize a few of those words up there. Um, <laughs> so, Literally all of them. Yes. This is your slide. You uh, yeah, so there's some things to consider. Collaborative writing, some of these may touch on some other things uh, mentioned before, but it's really important to remember that the whole point of this is collaborative writing, uh, touching back on the idea of killing your own ego. You want to make sure that there's more than one person. Normally, in a creative process, it's just kind of you creating your own thing. And sometimes it's hard to keep in mind that the other person you're collaborating with is also a person trying to collaborate their own thing. Sometimes um, it's also important to ask a lot of questions, especially early on, uh, something that we did very well for this, which is such a wonderful change of pace compared to other projects I've worked on. Uh, if you ever don't understand anything, let them finish what they're saying, but it's really good to ask questions and to be interested in because nothing makes you feel better than when you're explaining something you're passionate about to somebody else, and instead of them just being all like, uh-huh, okay, they're asking you questions, and they're interested, and they want to know more, it feels so nice, because you're like, you're really, really connecting with somebody. And so the more questions you ask about this thing when you're collaborating, the more excited they are, the happier they are, it just, it just builds a better rapport, which is very important when collaborating. Um, the next is, touching back on the other issue, collaboration is not competition. So again, try and make sure that you're fair. If you get to write a few, uh, a few ideas and you're really, really dead set on it, like two ideas, then make sure that they get some ideas that are dead set for them that they really want to do. And then everyone will be happier and you'll create a better creation because of it. Um, also, take notes. I know it sounds dirty and weird, but sometimes it's <coughs> real nice to have something you can go back to because nothing sucks more than having this long discussion with somebody talking about all these wonderful ideas and all this cool stuff, and you're ready to go, and you, you go home, and you're ready to write, and you're like, what did they say about that? And do they, do they want two or three? Or, uh, yeah. This it's, is why Discord so, lets you pin messages. Discord, very nice. Yeah, it's <laughs> yes, very nice. And then next is the... Very, very common, yes and, for those of you who are not familiar with improvisation. Yes and. Yes, it's always just like that. It's always a good idea instead of immediately shutting someone down and then not being able to continue whatever it was that they cared about, it's always better to yes and someone. Agree and go, that idea is cool, maybe we can explore that more. And then eventually, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. But it's always a good idea to let people go somewhere with their creativity because they'll end up being happier and who knows, maybe you, they'll, they'll show you something that was really cool that you didn't think about. Uh, remember to offer honest critique, touching back on editing and other stuff. Try and be kind about it. There's a big difference between going, I don't like that part, that part sucks, we need to change it. And going, you know, that's really cool, but I have, a, I have this idea that maybe we should see how that goes and we can decide afterwards which one leads us to a better place. That goes a, a little bit of kindness goes a very long way. A beautiful Fluttershy uh, taught us that. Um, give more compliments. Everybody loves it when you're high energy. This is again building rapport with who you're working with. You want to try really hard. You're amazing. Oh, thanks. I know, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just it's it's a very it's a very tiny thing you can do to make somebody feel better and make the writing process easier. If they write a tiny little snippet and you're all like, that was really good tell them that was really good. If someone's drawing something and you like the way they drew the wings, you're like, hey, those are some really cool wings. Because at the end of the day, that costs you nothing, but it makes them feel really special and really proud of their work, and that means you'll just have, you'll have better work. I know for me, like, giving compliments, it, there's always this mental block in my head, like, oh, I don't want to bother them, or they already probably know that they're great. Like, you can get rid of that part of your brain. Like, people, the world would be a better place if everyone expressed the, po the positive things that they were thinking to each other. <coughs> I've never, I have never once uh, gone up to someone and complimented them on something and had them like react poorly to it. People, <laughs> which again, it sounds obvious, but like it's, it can be hard sometimes. But it's, you know, it makes their day, it makes your day better. You know, compliment people when they deserve it. Right. I can give a good example. Dad, right here, stand up for a second. Ow. This, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy's been drawing this whole time, and his drawings are fantastic. Show everybody your drawings. I, I thought this was Lee. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. I can't. Yeah, we can help. Around my shirt. Sure. Hey. Hey. Uh, last, last bit of hey. advice. Oh. She colored that one. Yay! Yeah. 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 Make sure that they are honest compliments and not just like fake compliments. Like, hey, Vivid, nice shirt. 
Oh. See, that's an honest compliment. <laughs> All right, and then lastly, to wrap up back to the top, remember that this is our project. This is you and other people. So your feelings are very important, and your agenda and your opinions are important, but so are theirs. So always keep that in mind. All right, we're going to keep it rolling. So uh, we're going to start talking a little bit more about Ciderfest in particular. Um, lots of pros with Inside Fest. Again, we're working with tons of talent in the fandom. Again, I said we already have 40 people volunteering to help with this in some kind of capacity, which is fantastic. I want to see that number balloon to like 100 if we can. Um, but it, it is, uh, we get to work with like so, there's so many people that you get to work with and so many new ideas and like do different types of stories that you get to see. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful to just kind of be a part of it. It feels a little bit like a big art festival in some ways. Um, and you just kind of get to every once in a while dive into Discord and see what people are talking about with like their ideas about like, oh, I want to do this story, or hey, what if we had this story connected to the other story over here? Can we make, uh, you know, can I do a multi-part story that where one story affects the other? Like it's, a lot of really cool ideas are coming from that. Uh, still want to keep going with this one? Because I think this is all your content too, actually. Probably. Uh, um, okay, so working with tons of talent in the fandom, this is an amazing effort. I'm so excited to be a part of this. This is great being able to work with writers, voice actors, just all sorts of editors, like all those people that tend to kind of get overshadowed in the fandom compared to voice actors and, and, and artists and stuff. Uh, it's so wonderful. Plus, we're adding a live action twist uh, to it this year where you get to, you as players, get to interact <coughs> with actors playing as characters and you get to make decisions. So the live action element means you're not just reading a book and going, oh, that was a nice story. You actually get to be part of several stories, which is so cool. I love I love ARGs and LARPing, and that is, that's what you guys get to do that weekend. Um, uh, getting to highlight writers, again, boy, writers sure do get neglected in pretty much every fandom. Uh, thankfully, the My Little Pony fandom is much nicer about that, but it's nice to see even more. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the, the largest writing collaboration in the fandom, in several fandoms, I know. This is, this is a huge deal. I'm so excited to be part of this team. Uh, some of the challenges that we have to deal with, shepherding cats. Tough stuff. A lot of, lot of, lot of, a uh, lot of schedules yes. you got to work around. Uh, a lot of different lines of communication. A lot of people use. I mean, even just on the base level, a lot of people use Telegram. A lot of people use Discord. Coordinating schedules, times, all that stuff. Communication lines. It's, it's a nightmare. And boy, oh boy, I'm glad that I only have to deal with part of it. Thank you, Lemon. <laughs> uh, yeah, touching base on scheduling. Everybody's got different schedules. Morning people, night people, getting schedules together for meetings. Such a pain. But thankfully, we make it work thus far. Uh, and lastly, one of the important things that is one of my preferred challenges is that I like working within the canon. Of course, these stories may twist things around a little bit. That's what happens when, when we write with a special magical book intent. Uh, well, yeah, traditionally it's really fun having characters to work with, but at the end of the day, working within predetermined lines is always harder than just inventing stuff on your own, and I hope that you guys will enjoy what we do with all of the characters we've learned to grow and love uh, over the last ten plus years. And y'all, there are so many characters in the show. We did the shipping panel the other night, and we were just like, oh, we'll just have a few characters. There were 100, we listed 170 of them, and we had like barely scratched the surface. <laughs> so you need 170 people to volunteer to be different characters? No, 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 not that. <laughs> <laughs> like, in the show, in like, the MLP show itself. So like, Gordon, like, what is canon for every single one of those characters is a nightmare. But, oh, okay. Though that would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 that'd be great. Send tomorrow. Uh, speaking yeah. of Ciderfest, let's talk a little bit about Ciderfest. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. end with a plushie? What was that? Does it end with the promise plushie? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure plushies get involved at some point. I'm sure someone's going to write a plushie story. I think they do. Yeah. Wait, does that um, mean? Oh, now I had so to sneak it in there once today. Plushie, plushie, plushie. I don't write a story about 
Thank you, Janice. <laughs> See if you can have it done for the next half hour. <laughs> <laughs> that was very mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can try. So, uh, like we've been hinting at before, we wanted to uh, create a, sto a story that allows us to tell you know, something coherent from beginning to end, uh, but also gives our writers a chance to have some artistic freedom uh, around like who they're writing and uh, really let them show their stuff because we don't we don't want to try to edit everyone into single, one like singular voice. Uh, we're going to try to keep it you know keep the quality high for certain. We want everyone's different talents to sh uh, to shine through with what they're writing. So the story that we settled on is there is there is a how many people are familiar with uh, Fizzy Glitch, the mascot Fizzy Glitch? Woo! So Fizzy Glitch is a mascot from Ponyville Cider Fest. Uh, she is a Kimrin and uh, came onto the team uh, with Barley and Caramel, the two uh, mascots we've had forever. Uh, Fizzy Glitch came on in, I think, 2020. For the to, online. For the mm -hmm. online conventions. Yeah. To help out because, you know, we couldn't meet in person, and so we said, hey, we need a digital expert. So, uh, Fizzy Glitch is, she's got all these cool digital, like, fire effects and everything. She is, you know, very, very excited, very, very happy, has been great to help us with all of our online conventions. There is a small problem when you hire somebody to help with online conventions, and you start to come back to regular in-person conventions. <laughs> and so we've learned, and so we found out that Fizzy Glitch, she's not feeling so great. She's uh, feeling a little bit left out right now. She doesn't really know her place, and you know, oh, no. Barley and Caramel are, you know, they're doing their best. They've got a lot of a lot of prep work to do for the convention. Y'all can jump in at any time, by the way. Okay, I, I thought you had a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, oh, He's okay. monologuing. He probably wrote this last yeah, night. Yeah. <laughs> Off the bill. <laughs> <laughs> monologuing. Stop it. Okay. Stop the evil villain. Yeah, you know, that's part of what we're going to do in this story. Oh, Ooh, yes. 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 Fight the monologues. I mean, at least in part. The the monologues. No, all right. So, does anyone remember that book from the very opening and closing moments of G4? Yes! What book? Whatever. Oh. We don't oh. remember. It's magic. It's a it's general a common book. book. Totally not that book. Totally not that book. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no. Hasbro is not that book. It's just, it's just like a slide of the course, right, guys? It's creatively distinct. I'm going to say that book was the inspiration yes. yeah. uh, <laughs> for this story, <laughs> in which Fizzy Glitch discovers this magical tome, the book of all stories, which contains mm. every story ever written, including all those weird shit fics. <laughs> Especially in those weird shit fics. No, no, the, the main story is okay for children. We're not including it. <laughs> They're going to be an 18 <laughs> book. No, all those stories are full. So she opens this book, hoping to uh, find some way to, to change the situation she's in. Uh, not really sure what this book does, but it appears to be magical, and we'll all just open it up, and it sucks the entire convention, including all the attendees, inside its confines. And uh, everyone uh, finds themselves in this strange world of a multiverse with oh, all no, the different the situations and settings you can think of, <laughs> and characters running amok through portals back and forth. There's portals? Portals, yes, we're thinking with portals. Oh, yes, portals. Oh, no. <laughs> oh god. Uh, PCU basically, it is basically the PC the PCU. Uh we are telling a it's kind of a multiverse story and the uh getting into the mechanics a little bit of it, uh because you know Fizzy Glitch has been, you know, she's really really frustrated, she goes she turns into a Neric uh as part of this process. She's angry, she's sad, all of her negative emotions are driving her to use this uh book of all stories to try to change things to to make it better. But in releasing it, she releases Basically every single character we've ever seen in the show, the comics, everything else. And they all realize they can use the book too. Oh. Wait, not just the show, the comics, every iteration of My Little Pony. Oh. 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 oh no. Oh, no. Yes, there is that. Yes, even that one. <laughs> What if they uh, take control of the book? So we're gonna get the witches. No, let's so everybody is so everybody's running around and trying to uh, trying to set history, uh, set history, and set the world to the way that they want it to be. And the way that we're doing this uh, mechanically, uh, actually, Steele, do you want to talk a little bit about how we're doing this mechanically? Woo! <clears throat> okay, so uh, well, I mean, there's, there's 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 a lot to a lot to say, but players are gonna have uh, uh, they're gonna have access to a smartphone app where they can they'll be given choices, they'll have options, they'll be interacting with actors, other people, staffers, 
uh, and whatnot, and dressed up as characters, you can interact with them. Oh, 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 one second, oh, one second, don't oh. worry about it, keep going, keep going. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and everything goes dark. <laughs> I know the bad. That was, that was on this is what happens if you fail. Yes. <laughs> Show up to It's just the cool. Dark Souls, you die. All of the players that wish to participate can go and interact with the, the various, not only actors, but other activities as well that may be found around the convention. We have like, we've already got like 30 different activities that people have suggested. Oh my gosh, wow. fantastic. So Our team is fantastic. And I haven't even begun. I might have added three more today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you guys are going to be quite busy doing your normal convention stuff along with all of the wonderful ARG elements that we have here. The ARG be... stands for uh, Alternate Reality Game. Oh, alter... uh, augmented Reality Game. Sorry, uh, augmented, sorry yes. augmented Reality Game. And so you are going to be able to interact with the app um, in, an, in a very interesting way. Could you talk a little bit about how um, uh, people can interact with the app? How is, how is that going to work? So, uh, the app is going to be full of wonderful things, ways to uh, make your lovely decisions. There's going to be several story points along the way. You'll be, you'll be given many, many choices. Uh, small bits of story with all of these writings happening. There will be little, large, there's going to be one large overarching story that takes place over the course of the, over, uh, the entire weekend, as well as smaller bits that you will be exposed to over the course of the weekend, either through know. activities, through actors, and you get to make little decisions. Who do you decide to help? Do you decide to be an agent of chaos and, and uh, mess things up for the town in order to, to you know, sate Discord's chaos? Or do you wish to help the main six to restore order to some damaged part of Ponyville? All of these decisions, you get to work with the actors through the app, and these decisions matter. Yes. As opposed to most video games where you make a choice and then it doesn't mean anything, all of your decisions have weight, and every night, us storytellers keep track of all the decisions that people have made, and they do, in fact, do something and have a weight. We are not going to we're not going to spoil it, but one of the things we're talking about is that the future of the future of Cider Fest is at stake in a very real way. Charlie is letting us do something, and I am <laughs> shocked. I am shocked. <laughs> this. But there is some very important stuff tied to. Uh, the outcome of the story. So, like, the choices y'all make are absolutely going what to What do matter. you mean by that? I can't tell you. <laughs> no, I can't tell you. All you is that the forever. players are going to be taking part in something that can literally reshape Ciderfest from here on out. For sure. Do not hey, summon scope. Do, do you want to know? No. Yeah. Yeah. No spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really want to know? Yeah. 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 Then come no. to Ciderfest. Hey. Ah. Would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, one of the big things that we're going to do is, and we're gonna, I, I'm really pushing for an analog version as well for people who don't want to do a, uh, don't necessarily want to interact with the app the whole time, but uh, we should sell battery packs actually for this. Yeah. Um, but uh, you'll, have the, you'll have the story app. It's being developed by Brandon White, who also did the Winnie City uh, app. If you ever get a chance to say hi to Brandon, he's a phenomenal human being, does all this for free, loves programming. We're so, so, so lucky that he's on the team. Um, but all throughout the convention, you are going to uh, have these little code words. It's going to have a hashtag and like one or two words after it, and you will go into the app, plug in that code word, and it will bring up a story for you. Uh, so maybe you'll be you know wandering around the convention and say, oh, there's a portal here, or there's a Pinkie Pie's cannon says it's being pointed towards Yak Yakistan. Uh, and it, says, it might say like you know plug in this code word to get launched uh, launched from the cannon. Uh, if you plug that code word in, you are going to then uh, be brought into a uh, brought into a story within the app. You get to read it through, and that's how you're going to get to make a lot of your decisions. Um, I will say that these code words can appear anywhere, uh, so you really want to be keeping an eye out for them. Our, no. Again, our, our goal is to have anywhere. Things. anywhere. It can appear anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. in incredibly subtle ways. Like you want to keep things out. You, if you see one, if you see one anywhere, you might want to make a note of it. Maybe there's some special ones that are only available to people who go to certain panels. I'm not saying anything in particular, but perhaps people should maybe take note of something if they see something. The cameras are your friends. Yes. <laughs> Ask permission. There may or may not be one in Charlie's pocket. <laughs> we want to do the demonstration of the live action thing. Let's ask them. All right, guys, would you rather do questions or demonstration? Let's raise hands. Raise your hand if you'd like rather questions. Questions. You guys don't have any questions? I do have one question. What's your question? 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 What's your question?
what's the point of the questions if we could just have a demonstration? Give us the demo. I need a demo. This is gonna be um are we like gonna get updates on the story every day or yeah, at yeah. the so end? So the app at the end of each day or the beginning of each day also. Yep. Yeah, uh will be like here are the, the main story beats that are changed based on the collective choices of the attendees. And then like closing ceremonies is especially here's the ultimate uh finale. Yep. Okay. So yeah, it's gonna be a we're gonna be pushing uh we need push notifications to uh, push those updates to the app. Just, just so everybody knows, what that means practically is that the leadership team especially has to write like five different versions of every little check-in point throughout the weekend, and it's only, and at any given point, only one of them is going to be seen. So we get to throw away a bunch of work. Hooray! Hooray! Or you get to be the average game master. I guess why I'm asking is, is the app like accessible? Because my husband really focuses on updating apps and making them accessible. We would love to get any feedback you have on that. Brandon has a lot of... I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I know Fox's like job. That's a majority of what he does is he makes sure everything's AMA, like for hard of hearing, blind, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We would love to make it as accessible as possible. Yeah, yeah. if you can, if you can uh, go into the the best way is probably just go into the Ponyville Ciderfest Discord, the Windy City Ponyville Ciderfest Discord. It's all, it's all on the big server. Uh, and tag if it's me, if it's syntax, you can tag Charlie and just say, hey, I want to talk about the accessibility of the app at Ciderfest. Yeah. That'd be a, a great way to get in contact with us. Thank you very much for the answer. Yeah, we'd love to hear that. Uh, in the back, Green Church. You, yes. Oh, in the Kiku, yes. Oh, hi, I didn't know you were still here. Oh, yeah, we were talking about how to go That's here. the guy. Really bad at this. Sorry, buddy. Uh, so the easiest way to volunteer for this, uh, we're looking for volunteers across basically the entire uh, experience. Um, if you want to volunteer as a... The best way is always to, right now to go into the, again, Ponyville Cider Fest Discord. I'm going to, uh, on social media over the next couple days, once we once we all kind of recover from Winnie City a little bit, we're going to do one more big recruitment push. Uh, there's, a, there's a form that you can uh, that you can fill out to say, hey, I'm interested in being a writer, or I want to be one of the like actor cosplayers that's going to interact with attendees, or uh, I want to be an artist that's going to help with some of the art inside the app. Uh, so we'll be pushing that out a little bit after a little bit after Winnie City. Um, but if you're in the Ponyville Cider Fest Discord, that's the easiest way to get in contact with us directly. In terms of what we're looking for uh, for writers, like we said, we're in kind of this, uh, we've got this multiverse story built up, and so most of the stories we have are going to be on the shorter side, about like 1,500, word, 1500 words or so, which is, you know, not, not a lot. But we want, we want to focus on like bite-sized stories that people can read quickly, make their decisions, and then go and experience lots of them. <laughs> not to say there's not going to be opportunities for much longer writing, we have lots. Lots and lots of steaming for that. Uh, but we are looking for as many of these smaller uh, experiences as possible so uh, uh, so that our attendees can say, oh yeah, there's a hashtag with a little, looks like a little story about Braver, and I want to read that one, and there's one about Pip, and I want to read about that one, and here's all of Vincent Tong's characters in one story. Let's read about this one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're interested in writing or acting or even just, or even editing, we have some people that are on the team specifically to be editors. Uh, we, we'd love to hear from you. And actors, so Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are looking to be actors. Yep, Crackle's Cousin Cosplay oh, yeah. something that coordinates all that as well. Yeah. Speaking of Crackle's Cousin's Cosplay, if you could be so generous as to help out with the GoFundMe, uh, they, they were doing a... Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so, I got him! Uh, GoFundMe up, if anyone needs the link, I can get it to you or we'll post it. I owe you money. Center. But uh, it's <laughs> gone through a very hard time with medical bills. And oh. just wanted I think there's still, there's still silent auctions going on. Oh, there's still some today? Uh, it ended at today. noon. My husband picked uh, up my question. Uh, so yeah, but you can still <laughs> contribute directly to the GoFundMe. It's a, a great member of the community who is in a lot of need right now. Yes. The GoFundMe should also be in your booklet page. That's right. Yeah, that's right, actually. If Thank you. you. So look at the booklet, and uh, that gets you the link you need. Cool. Yeah, all right. Can we see the demonstration now? Yeah. yeah! We can do a demonstration. We've not, we've not prepared super well for this because I'm not an actor. Uh -huh. I am. What do you need me to do? Perfect. <laughs> um, who do you want to be? Do you want to be Shadow Bowls or who would you like to be? Uh, sure. I'll be Caramel. Uh, we're going to do. That's actually. The thing you're looking at is for closing ceremonies. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. 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 I get to do a huge trailer voice later today at closing ceremonies. It's gonna be fun. Dun dun dun! Okay. Guys, 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 closing ceremony spoilers? Caramel's in it. Yay! Yeah. 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 Uh, so you're gonna be the, gonna be the character, you're gonna need someone to be the attendee. Who wants to be the attendee? Oh, sure. I'll be the attendee. Alright, you're gonna be the attendee. Right. Why don't you come up, up here? Right. Just, just the way this is gonna work is that, uh, imagine Sonic sounds as dressed up as a, who does Sonic look like right now? Name a character from the show that Sonic looks like. Sonic. 
Vinyl. 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 I don't have the horn yet. Vinyl. 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 I need to get on my class about this. Did you come in? I think it would be more room to just walk. So the way this is going to work is that our... Our actor, our actor volunteers are going to all be wearing a, I think a big armband is what we decided. Yeah. Something to denote that like they're not just a regular cosplayer, they are someone that is a part of the story. So if you see someone like that, uh, for example, Vinyl Scratch, and you think Vinyl Scratch is really cool, uh, you might uh, approach them, and we'll say uh, what, what we'll have done in the past is given each of our voice actors or uh, each of our actors a prompt to say, you know, here's here's kind of the, the story that you were telling, again, written by our writers. Mm -hmm. So let's say um, your prompt is that. Yeah, Octavia, Octavia's been lost. All right. And fold in, fold in one of the pages of the Book of All Stories if you can. All right. All right. Go. Final Scratch, you're my favorite character. Oh, hey, thanks, man. I, I totally signed autographs and everything, but I'm looking for Octi. Have you seen her? Like, it's just crazy. I don't know, man. It's like they mix in all the genres or something. Have you listened to very boring classical music? Ah, uh, do you think that's what I need to do? Ah, <laughs> uh, I guess. I mean... She was going on about they were trying to collect all these these these, these this, this crazy book apparently, and uh, and then they we gotta get these 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 pages. And I, I guess I guess she had like the music. She was trying to write it on the back of this one page, right? And it was it was I don't know. It went off through this portal thing, right? Okay, and, this is very important. Yeah. Was it sad music or happy music? Uh, it was kind of sad. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well. You know, now that I think of it, maybe because because she was writing about that thing, it was probably in that. It was probably going over that way, and this is where I have like code words already, you know, created for different possibilities. So here, try this, and then you go off and like put that in the app, and then I have a similar <laughs> conversation with another person, but they might have a different, you know, idea that right. gives me two on one of my different predetermined possibilities. So instead of taking it, it would be more like. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, if I have pieces of paper, I might like pass them out to you. But uh, other than I just get to. Yes, so look, so look, so look. Exactly. And scenes. And scenes. Yay! So again, one thing that we uh, you, you heard that there was a discussion of like, oh, is it some sad music? Like, is you know, is Octavia maybe feeling sad? One thing to work with our actors on is having uh, a number of different story outcomes based on just wherever the conversation goes, and it'll be a little bit up to the actors in a judgment to say like which which kind of ending did they get, and that will influence which uh, code word is given to them, so you can read a little bit, a little blurb about how the story resolves itself. Um, part of the reason we want to do this is because, again, we really want people's choices to matter and the conversations to matter, and also so that people are going to have different experiences. Like, the next person that comes up and talks to Vinyl Scratch might get a completely different ending, and we really want, like, people and friends to talk about, like, hey, what's happening in your version of the story? What did you see? Like, you know, what, what are your code words? And of course, you know, sharing code words among each other, because that's fun. Choose your own adventure. Yay! The pony way. <laughs> All right. We got, like, we got like three minutes left. Do we have any other last minute questions? Yes. Is it too late to sign up to help with the ride? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. I know. We need more people. Yeah, we're recruiting right find now. Find us on Discord. Find the Ponyville Cyberfest slash Winnie City, uh, Winnie City Cyberfest Discord. Yeah, I, was, I was wondering if the sign up sheet on the website still works. Because I, I remember seeing it a few. If you still have the link, yes, we're gonna push it out again. But that that Google form still works if you if you yeah, still have it. Yeah, it's still on the website. Yep, go for it's it. Perfect. Yes, we would love all your help. You guys are awesome, and for those of you who don't help, uh, good luck in the game. Yeah, as much as I love writing, like so many stories, I would love to hear other people's <laughs> stories. <laughs> yes. Uh, I see you again. So, if you're an actor for it, you would not get the whole story or what the top one thing would be. You would just know what part of the role you're doing. Correct. We're gonna give the you're gonna have the prompt and like your own kind of self-contained story. Uh, I mean, you'll be able to read the stories that you're involved with beforehand. Of course, we'll let you know how each of those resolves, so that you can kind of, as an actor, decide like, all right, the conversation I'm having is kind of leading towards this ending versus uh, one of these other ones. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you had your hand before. Oh, okay. How was that? All right. Anything else? I have a question. I have an answer. Yes. Who's excited for Cider Fest? <laughs> Team. Thank you again to everybody that's already helping us write. Thank you to Janice for sitting on this panel just on kind of at the drop of a hat. We really appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, everyone, we will see you at Cider Fest. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the city. 
If you're enjoying this vlog, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe.